Now, there are some precautions and cautions that you need to take even before you start these practices. I know I should have told these things in the beginning, but probably you wouldn't appreciate them at the time. Now you are going to appreciate what I'm going to say because of some uh, background now you have and a little bit of practice that you already are doing. First, you need a master. Why do you need a master? Because it's possible to make a mistake. Yes, you understood everything, but there will be pitfall, there will be resistance. Hardly anybody is so pure and perfect that they will not encounter a difficulty in their practice. I've never seen anyone for whom the practices went smoothly. It is not a red carpet sprinkled with rose petals. It is more like a roller coaster and you hit the obstacles every now and then. And yes, I know you are very intelligent. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on the path of knowledge. And you have the capability to see these and you can overcome them. You see, you can do that and it can take one year. But a master can fix it for you in a week. A seeker does not want to waste time. And a master is nothing but a device to save time. This is what is going to bring respect for the master. He knows nothing really. He knows nothing that you don't know. His past experience and qualification make us respect the master. Now use the master. Use his service to move faster on your path. This is smartness. This is intelligence. Remember, your ego does not want this and so it is going to erect a lot of barriers between you and the master. Then you should avoid extreme practices. Like for you, it is a child's play to sit for two hours and pay attention to something. But there is no real need. There is no real need to do that. You are naturally gifted. So do it for a few days, probably a few months. And then focus on that in which you need to improve. Focus on something in which you are not a master yet. Avoid extremes of all kinds. Live your life naturally. A simple life full of awareness is all you need. You don't need any extremes. You don't need to escape to the jungle and sit in a cave. Oh no, I need that master who has 250 years of experience in Himalayan caves. I learn the awareness only from him. And I am so great that only such a master can teach me. Nobody else. This is ego. This is the ignorance speaking and uh, it is stupidity. You don't need an extreme kind of master and that master has no interest in you. Remember this, even if they exist. You go to your nearest master who is aware and happy. Probably is asking for some money or fruits. It's not a big deal for you. If you want a celebrity master, then be prepared to spend thousands and stand in a line, wait for your turn and then you get two minutes to speak. And the master is so busy that <laughs> he gives you a canned answer which is given to 10,000 other people which was already available in his 20 YouTube videos. You don't want that kind of master. You want somebody with whom you can talk nicely, relaxed manner, sitting across the table or in your sofa. Go to the nearest one. Go to the one who is not busy. Go to the one who is not surrounded by a crowd of seekers. If that master is not serving your needs, then you need to look for somebody else. This is also a part of the practice. And don't worry, there will be a full episode on uh, these masters and gurus and how to find them in uh, future parts of this series. There are extreme practices that involve attention and uh, awareness, but uh, they are not recommended on the path of knowledge. And third, don't drop off the practice. If you've practiced for a year and you drop out, now you want to start it again, you will find that you are back to the square one. Yes, there will be a little bit of improvement. You won't be a total newbie, but you will find that you struggle for many months to get back. You will be rusty a little bit. So, if you don't get time, do not break your practice. Do not make it completely zero. Keep practicing something or the other. Make your busyness your practice. Become aware in whatever activities you are involved in. Remember, there is no difference between your life and spiritual practice. The 
awareness practice is not another job that you do besides your life and jobs when you are alone you remain aware when you are with family you remain aware when you are with your children you remain aware and when you are on the job you remain aware and there should not be any reason to break the practice this is illogical to say that i cannot practice now because i am doing something else well do something else with awareness yes the ego can cook cook up these reasons to avoid the practice and that happens a lot so i am too busy in my new born child now i have no time to remain aware i change my job i change my city and now i am trying to settle down in a new place no awareness no time for awareness for me i'll do it from next year i just got married and my wife does not like these practices why is your wife even involved in your practices it is something which is completely personal it is more personal than person so when you find these kind of excuses become aware do not practice reluctantly you don't like it at all but your guru told you but your teacher told you and out of respect for him or because you know nothing else but you totally hate these awareness and attention practices this is not your path then don't do it it is not going to bring the fruit and probably it will cause some kind of harm and surely it is a waste of time don't do it reluctantly you should be in love with the practices and actually yes i have never seen anybody who does not like awareness when they taste the awareness and they are asked would you like to go back to the darkness because it is probably more comfortable and i have never seen anybody say yes to that question no no i am ready to take all the trouble but i am not going to give up the awareness and this is your love for the practices and then the practice will happen naturally then you will laugh at this idea of practice it is not a practice you will say this is the way i am this is the way i live my life i am aware i don't practice awareness practice only if you are in love start this only if, if you like it very much don't do it only because it is in fashion these days or something like that your friends are doing it you need to try it and it, if it fits you do it and it is more like not doing rather than doing it's more non doing there than doing something with effort then you should not practice because of fears of some kind somebody told you that if you don't do this something bad will happen no nothing bad will happen and probably something bad will happen if you do it because of the fear there's such fearful people i've seen especially in this country they do the rituals which are set up by the traditions oh i need to light up the lamp i need to burn the incense i need to sit and sing before the deities the statue and one day they don't do it when they they cannot do it for some reason and extreme fear oh, i missed it something bad is going to happen this is superstition this is not awareness practice <laughs> it is just indoctrination you don't know what is awareness practice you don't know what is religious practice you don't know what is spirituality it is just fear that is making you do this kind of circus i don't think anybody of this kind is even listening to these videos or my talks i do see them here and there what can we do i am i feel helpless because they are totally incapable of understanding what is happening a practice taken up because of fear and indoctrination is more harmful than no practice and again you should not do it because of greed i'll get this i'll get that i'll become wealthy i'll become beautiful i'll become like more spiritual and attractive to people i'll become ethical <laughs> don't do it because of the greed if there is greed you become aware of it and that will be a good practice you will get nothing i can give you this in writing sometimes there will be side effects that will quickly come and go and sometimes there will be symptoms in your body which will be like real diseases not a side effect of being aware and do not dismiss these symptoms as spiritual side effect kundalini effects something like that or oh, today i am feeling a severe headache and like i am fainting and i am totally devoid of energy probably it is just kundalini probably it is just side effect of the awareness and that will be stupidity don't do that 
go to doctor and get a checkup done and believe me if it is a side effect or it is you know the so called symptom impurity is showing up then they will be not detected by the doctor the doctor is not going to find anything there the doctor will find only the symptoms and the doctor will prescribe something and so take the medicine there is no harm but the good thing is if it is not because of the your practice then your life will be saved probably it is some real disease now a physical complication these uh, cautions will be more useful when you are doing some advanced practice practices that are forthcoming in our series and i'll repeat them again there the ego shows up in many ways here some people becoming spiritual and adopting a practice and develop some kind of pride in it so oh, i am a practitioner now i am a spiritual person now everybody is lowly animals less evolved so avoid this kind of hubris and pride false pride if you see this become aware that this has arrived this has awakened in you as another activity another attempt of the animal in us to show up similarly if you meet people who are more advanced than you who have better practice than you don't become jealous of them don't try to misguide them or insult them because this is jealousy don't be envious if you don't want friends it's okay don't make enemies especially in the spiritual community my practice is better than your practice my guru is bigger than your guru and this is stupidity this is what an ordinary person is doing this is what a religious brainwashed person is doing if this tendency arises become aware and do not do the lowly kind of things for example to get the favors from your guru the guru usually asks for donation and you donate 1 million in hopes that you will get all of his attention now no guru is going to do that he will take the million but <laughs> any real guru is going to treat you equally as others the most poor person in the group will be given the same amount of attention like a millionaire so we should avoid all kinds of lowly behavior become aware of all that behavior yes the practice is most important for you and yes it is your life goal but that does not mean that i lie to get into my meditation cushion your boss told you to finish your work and then go and you say no wait a minute the work is not important my awareness practice is more important and you lie sir i have a very important work somebody is sick in my family or somebody died and i need to leave now so same behavior but now for spiritual practice instead of something worldly it means there has been no improvement the lowliness is still there and one important thing that is that if you are not an expert in these things if you are not doing it yourself you should not teach them to others this is especially important if the other has no interest in it do not manipulate others to take up the practices yes you think that these practices are world changing they are going to bring paradise on earth and so i need to teach it i need to just get hold of somebody and start teaching them what to do remember this world is this pile of junk and will remain so it is a lower world it is full of ignorance it will remain like this and nobody is entitled for these teachings and these practices nobody you cannot decide that they decide themselves just like nobody manipulated you nobody forced you to watch these videos and do these practices it was your own will you took the teaching nobody taught you what you can do if you are so interested you can dig the well and the thirsty people will come and drink you see this whole channel is like this it is a fountain of knowledge it is not an attempt to convert the ignorant stupid violent people into gods it is a fountain for the thirsty remember not everybody is going to reach here they cannot see it they cannot smell it if not asked do not teach and maintain secrecy just like i said it is more personal than the person you don't need to advertise it i become spiritual now i don't eat meat now you lowly people you eat all these things and you are like don't do that 
your practice should be secret. Nobody knows you are aware. Nobody knows you are paying attention. And yes, you cannot avoid being seen in the ashrams or watching the videos of masters and reading these fat books. There you cannot, cannot maintain secrecy. But whenever the mention comes up and you see that the other person is not a seeker, is not really interested and has no respect for knowledge or anything spiritual, you simply zip your lips, change the topic. Your practices should remain a secret. Now, I know some people are not going to agree with it. I'm not doing anything wrong. Why should I be? You will know by your own experience. Especially if your near and dear ones, they don't agree with this. Especially if they are very religious, blind believers kind, they will cause problems for you. Then last but not the least, and probably the most important point, is beware of fraudulent teachers. You don't need to be simply aware that there are fake teachers. You actively avoid them. There are all kinds of teachers there. There are teachers belonging to the hundreds of the paths. It is very difficult to find one who fits exactly to your needs. Although there are, but you will need to search. And most of the newcomers, they fall prey of these fraud teachers. The first sign of a teacher is he is selling the knowledge. There will be conditions like, if you pay me this much, I'll tell you that much. And I, I won't tell you more than that without you paying me more. This is the first sign. You see, the knowledge should be free or should, should not be costly. The cost should be enough to cover the arrangements. If it is a meeting or if it is a book, yes, the book is going to cost something. But if the book costs you thousands and thousands, and you get that same old thing which is written in a free PDF that you download from the internet, then remember, you were cheated. A teacher who is a fraud will not speak clearly. His language will be very cryptic and you won't understand the teacher. Yes, there are cases when you don't understand the teacher because he is talking about a difficult subject or you have no introduction to the path. But you are with the teacher since two or three years and all he has told is, you know, some Sanskrit shlokes and some uh, encrypted kind of things. And probably he is not your teacher then. You got nothing. The teachers who are like businessmen want to keep their customers and so they are going to erect walls around you. They will discourage you to go to other paths or to other teachers. They will fill your mind with poison about other paths, other things. No, 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 you should not even study that book. It is bad for you. That Eastern religion, that Eastern philosophy. No, no, you will land in hell directly if you touch that book. If you find such things, they are cults. They are trying to keep their customers. They are trying to herd the cows so that they can milk you. A teacher is very open. He will simply tell you to go and explore whatever you want to explore. So I am going to go in more detail about these kind of teachers in um, our episode on the teachers. But right now, this is just a caution, just a warning. And with this, we can conclude the waking state practices. And I hope these will be useful for you. You will progress. And my best wishes are with you. Mm -hmm.